Trump administration and Republicans separated children from their parents at the border, threw kids in cages, and made families sleep under aluminum foil. We saw kids in cages, sleeping on the floor. Very easily arguable that it's morally wrong. Kids in cages, not okay. We've got kids in cages on the border. We've got people in, in prisons when they're trying to seek asylum. It's not right. It's beyond politics. It's about right and wrong. Ah, those were the days, the Trump administration, 2017, 18, 19. The folks throughout Mexico, Central America, South America, and beyond knew that it doesn't sound like a great idea to try to come to America at this point. Now, the commentators totally got it wrong. It wasn't kids in cages. It was, look, if you get arrested for doing something illegal, you will be separated from your child in America, in other countries, and at the border, at least under Trump, when it was sane. Uh, and those cages were purchased by Barack Obama. That messaging, however, was so effective, wasn't it? I mean, why did we not have a problem then and we have a problem now? A lot to do with the policy and the messaging. The new relief center has everything, every service, reception rooms to get advice, a cafeteria that will serve three meals a day with a rotating menu of South American dishes, recreation rooms with televisions, Wi-Fi, phones to call relatives back home, even game tables. There are also laundry rooms, bathrooms and showers, and a dormitory tent. First thing we're going to do is have one of our staff members go outside to greet you. We're gonna offer you food, snacks, water. You've come a long way, your clothes are probably dirty. You probably haven't showered in some time. That's not the right mental state to be in to determine where you want to be for the next several years of your life. Show up to New York City illegally and you're going to get your own personal butler? May I help you, sir? Would you like a snack? Would you like to sit down? Would you like a message? <laughs> this messaging has brought us to the brink, the brink, especially, well, all over the place, but this folks, to me, is shocking, and I don't know if it's happened anywhere else ever in America. James Madison High School, prominent school in Brooklyn, New York, in the middle of this city, founded 100 years ago, grades 9 through 12. Uh, some of the top, well, top, some very famous graduates, all right? Chuck Schumer, uh, Bernie Sanders, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Judge Judy, and former Senator Norm Coleman all attended this, this fairly prestigious high schools as far as public high schools go. That was a long time ago. Uh, let's see here. About 36 hours ago, a note went out from the principal. It seemed pretty innocuous at first, like a snow day, but it wasn't a snow day. To ensure a smooth transition for families temporarily sheltering overnight in the building, school will be in session remotely for all students. Wait a second. Those families <laughs> here illegally, illegal migrants, they sent them to the school. They sent the students home. The school was taken over by undocumented people, what we used to call, what we should still call, illegal aliens. Sorry, kids, but it's your parents' fault. Um, this is an unbelievable surrender. I can't get my hands around it. The parents can't get their hands around it. What is happening? The poor parents and the kids, listen to this. It's inexcusable to do this to the students of New York City high schools, especially after all they've been through with COVID. They have to come up with another solution. They cannot do this to the school kids. The remote learning is not happening mm -hmm. because none of the teachers show up to the link provided. But it happened. And there's really, you know, a couple of TV news reports, but we're not hearing anything from our national leaders. Joe Biden is the kind of guy who should get on the phone. He never would. I think they want this all. I think Democrats want all of this. They do, including a guy who gets way too much credit sometimes. Eric Adams, have you ever heard of this guy? The conservative media love to like him, actually. They go out of their way to like him, but he has no ability and no integrity and brought this on himself. This city has always been a sanctuary city, and we've always managed those who wanted to come to uh, New York City to pursue the American dream. Isn't that beautiful? Brought him on himself, brought it on all of us. Uh, and when the migrants started to show up, yep, he rolled out the red carpet. The history of this country has always been tied to welcoming those who are fleeing harm. And that is the spirit of this country. 
It must be done in an organized way. And I, I believe that we will always be responsible as, as New Yorkers to make sure whoever comes here, we're going to do our job, and that's what we have done. I think that New York has been a role model on how to effectively use our infrastructure to address the crisis and make sure we treat people in a humane way. And that's what we have done. So beautiful, but so stupid. And now he hit the panic button. I am declaring a state of emergency in the city of New York and issuing an executive order. We have not asked for this. There was never any agreement to take on the job of supporting thousands of asylum seekers. Well, actually, you just heard he was encouraging it all along. Uh, and he gets credit, actually, from the conservative media. Wow, look at this, a Democrat standing up to the situation. No, he brought it on. And this thing with the school, he did it. That's his decision to send the migrants to a school. There are all kinds of places they could have gone, not the school. Let's see. We have major facilities throughout New York City. Fort Hamilton, a federal army base right there. Could have been Fort Wadsworth, a Coast Guard facility. Uh, let's see. There's a major psychiatric center uh, on Randall's Island. There's also the Javits Center, which was a hospital for COVID patients during, well, COVID. It didn't happen, though. They sent him to the high school and made the kids stay home and do that Zoom stuff. Could it have something to do with the location of this school in the heart of Brooklyn? And you think Brooklyn, you know, votes, uh, votes Democrat? Not that portion of Brooklyn. It's actually overwhelmingly red. Take a look at who they voted for in 2020. Overwhelmingly for Donald Trump. Could that have had something to do with it? Maybe. Maybe. Look, it also happens that the dream of the Democrat Party these days is for, uh, well, illegal people to be here, take advantage of everything, and one day vote Democrat. Among the new laws, one allowing non-citizens to become police officers in Illinois. The qualifications to become a police officer here in California. Now anyone who can legally work in the state under federal law can become a police officer. Weird, right? And, uh, oh, of course, if you're going to be a cop, you obviously have to vote if you're illegal. It will give some 800,000 non-citizens the right to vote in local elections. Under the new measure, green card holders and those with work permits would be able to vote for things like mayor or city council seats. Every now and then, a Democrat will say, what, the, what do they call it? The quiet part out loud. I love this. This is uh, Congresswoman Yvette. Clark, uh, she represents a big chunk of Brooklyn right by that school. Listen to this. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. We have a diaspora that, that can absorb a significant number of these migrants. And I, that, you know, when I hear uh, colleagues talk about, uh, you know, the, 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 the doors of the inn being closed, um, no room in the end. I, I'm saying, you know, I, I need more people in my district, but just for redistricting purposes. <laughs> wow, huh? There she is, just saying it right there. They need the people to represent. They need the votes. Brings me those. That's just Congressman Clark. Who's ever heard of her? Hakeem Jeffries. You heard of him? And Chuck Schumer. Both of these guys are from Brooklyn, and they seem perfectly okay with the arrangement. Illegal migrants taking over a high school, displacing American students. And this is particularly bad and really, really fake. He's a fake guy, Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer, I pointed out earlier, went to that high school. Chuck Schumer is now in his late 70s, but he started out as the valedictorian at that high school. Actually graduated number one. Got into politics and always, always built himself as a champion of the middle class. He was doing it right up to, well, just before Trump showed up. Chuck Schumer, and this is the street where I grew up. My dad was an exterminator, my mom, a housewife. I can remember my father pacing the floor, worried about paying the bills, but my parents worked hard so they could build a better life for their kids. Ah, isn't that beautiful? Everybody wants to build a better life for their kids. But the kids at that school, right? Mm -mm. What would his father say about that one? Keep going. Today, the middle class is slipping away for far too many families. 
I approve this message because rebuilding the middle class is something I feel in my bones. It's why I fight as hard as I can for you. Wow, a champion of the middle class. Then something happened. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez shows up. She's elected to the U.S. Congress and becomes basically more important than Chuck Schumer and a political foe, a political threat. You know, for a while, she was talking about running against Schumer, and Schumer saw the writing on the wall. Go left or go home, back to New York for good. So he went crazy, woke left, putting on the kinte cloth, getting on his knee for this, that, and the other thing, updating his website. Used to be all common sense and, you know, trying to reduce crime. Now, now his priority is ushering in a new era of bold change. Stop the climate crisis and save our democracy and LGBT queer this, that, and everything. So a guy who used to specialize in, well, kind of minor issues to kind of, you know, bread and butter issues and some silly stuff like this. The most important things we can do is collect data. Which bees, which hives are dying off? What are they near and why? Not just meats and vegetables, but now ice cream. You know, this is serious and spreading. We have to stop it. Cyberbots, we call them Grinch bots, are expanding their reach and unfairly scooping up the hottest toys before parents can even click buy. This is the kind of stuff he specialized in. The Grinch bots, the toys, uh, expired ice cream. AOC shows up. Trump shows up. He comes down with a big case of Trump derangement syndrome. And, well, this happened. I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you. Wow. He'll do anything for power. Anything for power. Saying anything, be anything. He got into politics when he was 23 years old. 23. He's elected to the New York State Assembly. That's, uh, and he's been in elected politics ever since. He goes from an assemblyman in Brooklyn to majority leader of the United States Senate. And look at his, <laughs> look at this. This is, no kidding, this is his hideaway office. They call this a hideaway office. It's like a palace. It's like a palace, right? Um, you, don't, uh, you don't get the big office when you're a Democrat these days working for the middle class, doing things like, you know, Maybe his father would have appreciated. Was an exterminator. My mom, a housewife. I can remember my father pacing the floor, worried about paying the bills. Right, that guy. Father, would he uh, feel okay with students being displaced from the high school he went to, that he graduated from, valedictorian? If the illegal immigrants came in in 1959 and said, Chuck, go home, people from all over the world are taking over your school, the parents of that school, God bless those parents, huh? Chuck, you should be fighting for them. You lost your soul. You know, it's, it's heartbreaking, actually. I, I'm sure it is to your parents, your late great parents. They, they would be so ashamed and sad by what you've become. I mean it. I really do.